The Bible tells the story of four lepers facing imminent death who through an act of desperate faith delivered a city. Bill Prankard was with us recently and he preached about how this story has application in our nation today. His message was filled with stories that will lift your faith for a miracle no matter what you are facing right now. Stay with us to hear more of this powerful message on Lifeline Today. Welcome to Lifeline today. We are glad you're part of this broadcast. It's going to be a faith lifting broadcast yeah. as uh, we share a message from Dominion Conference with Bill Prankard. Let me also say thank you for being a part of this ministry. Many yeah. of you have been calling, supporting. Mm -hmm. We are raising funds to upgrade our TV equipment. We believe this is a very important season. It's a very strategic season, Dick. The preparing. gospel must go forth. We're preparing. The Lord yeah. gave us this word, prepare, prepare, prepare. Yes, amen. And uh, we knew this meant a lot of things. We're actually adding an app, a very special phone app to our ministry to make sure our reach is even further. Yeah. And Joan, it's, I, I, I'm just saying that this is a great season. Yeah. Um, in this message, though, <laughs> Bill took a very unique story out of 2 Kings 6 and 7. Uh -huh. And it's a story of four lepers outside the gate of Samaria, mm -hmm. a city that was under siege by the Syrians. And the Syrians had it locked down so that they were eating dove They dung. were literally starving to death. They were. Dick. It was, it was that horrific. And that's the siege warfare back that day was horrid. Yeah. And, uh, and then... Elisha gives a prophecy. Yeah. And he says, this day there will be an abundance. I, I he said, smart. in one day. Yeah. You know, and I really believe that that is what is happening in Canada right now. There are prophetic words going uh, forth in Canada that are saying uh, that God is going to do a quick redemptive work. So Absolutely. it applies to us. Well, our nation can't be changed until you change people's hearts. That's right. And, that, and that's about to happen. But this prophecy, the servant of the king said to Elisha, how can that be if God should even open the skies? <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and Elisha said, well, you'll see it, but you'll not eat it. That's and right. that was fulfilled. Literally, that, that fulfilled. man did not. He saw it, but he was trampled but at the gates. But those four lepers got up and took a risk. And that's yeah. what Bill's going to talk to so, us about. It's time for God's people to get up and, and take a risk. the point was this. <laughs> God can use anybody Amen. if he can use four lepers. Yeah. So we're going to go into the worship hall. You're going to hear a great message by Bill Prankert. Yeah. Now, <laughs> here we come. There were four lepers. Four lepers sitting outside. And if it's bad in the city, can you imagine what it's like out there? I mean, the, the people that were well are struggling and now here they are out there. And so they start talking and um, said, you know, if, we're going, if we sit here, we're gonna die. And if we go in the city, we're going to die. But what if one of them would have this crazy idea? What if we go over to the camp where the Syrians are camped and surrender. Well, one of them probably said, well, they'll kill us. <laughs> well, what have we lost? Yeah. If we stay here, we're going to die. If we go there, we're going to die. If we go there and they kill us, we die. But what if? And I believe that God is raising up a people that are actually coming to their senses and say, we can't sit here any longer. We need to do something. And anytime you do something, there's a risk. You know, we have this great saying within the church when we're saying goodbye to people, well, take care. Years ago, I just, I couldn't handle that. And so I, I would say to people, that, you know, we're out in a parking lot leaving a meeting where it's been so nice, and now people say, well, take care. And I say, don't say to me, take care. And they look rather, well, okay, what do you want me to say? Tell me to take a risk. 
Okay, take a risk. But so my wife, God bless her, she says, you know, people don't understand that. When you say that, I mean, they don't understand. But like read Hebrews 11. Not one of them took care. They put everything on the line. They risk everything and they change history. People that take care really don't accomplish anything. God's, because, you know, some of you, God's been speaking about doing things. You say, well, it's pretty risky. What do you got to lose? I mean, it's time. So, so they get talking, these four of them, and say, okay, why don't, let's give this a try. Now, if you've got four people, you've got four different personalities, and um, you've got about eight different thoughts going on. And so they start, but they're sick and they're weak and they haven't eaten and they've got leprosy and I mean, these guys are dying. So I'm sure they didn't get very, because there had to be one that was a whiner. Like in every four, there's got to be one. I preached a message years ago at a church and I was talking about this. That means some people whine about everything. Oh, it's too hot. Oh, it's too Like we were out taping by my house last week, I think it was, and it was beautiful. It was so warm and it was sunny. And, and then one of our neighbors, our lovely neighbors, walking her dog, and I just said in between taping, I said, good morning. I said, isn't this a beautiful day? And she says, well, if you say so. I said, well, look, it's not snowing. I like snow. <laughs> well, I said, well, hang on, it'll soon be coming. I mean, <laughs> but I somehow feel when it snows and it's cold, and I say, good morning, isn't this a beautiful day? She says, it's too cold. <laughs> Maybe not, but. So I preached at this church, and I preached about this couple, because I, I know people like this. So I just put names on them, Wayne and Wilma. Wayne and Wilma Weiner. Because Wayne and Wilma, I mean, they, they complain about everything. They come to church, oh, it's too loud. Oh, I can't hear. I mean, it's too cold, it's too hot, you know. So people in this church were just reacting so well. I just stretched this on as long as I could, but wait, and the more I did, the more they left. At the end of the service, a couple came up to me. Oh, yes. And they said, we just thought, you know, we'd like to introduce ourselves. My name's Wayne. <laughs> and this is my wife. No. Yes, Wilma. <laughs> and oh, it gets worse. And we're on the board here. No. So thank you for inviting me here because there's some places I've never been invited back. <laughs> So I never did, Wayne and Wilma. <laughs> but Wayne would be one of these four. Oh, I can't do it, I can't do it. But then there's gotta be one who was just so peppy, you know. Come on, Wayne, you can do it. I mean, look, you've come this far, come on, we can do it. I said, we're gonna die anyway, what's the point? Why don't we just sit down and die? We, we had an experience. I was telling Jacob about this, we were, Gwen and I and the team were traveling by tank in Russia, and it was very cold. It was the trip that Gwen did with me, 46 hours in the back of a tank without heat, you know, a few hundred kilometers from the nearest washroom to reach a community that had never heard the gospel. And it was phenomenal. We get there and the, the mayor welcomed us, give us this the whole town. I mean, we had the meeting in the cultural center and I thought everybody came the next morning. The mayor came to where we're staying. He said, there are people that couldn't come, they're sick. I've got my snow machine outside. I'll take you to their places so you can pray for them too. And so the mayor would walk in, you know, and say, they're here to pray for you, and nobody's going to say no. It was phenomenal. But we knew at the end of the week there, they were to get back in the tank and go 46 hours back, because we were only halfway, and you really wanted to go back. 
So partway along the way, the tanks stop, and it's dark. It's dark, you know, all the time during the winter time, and it's cold. And the drivers come and talk to an interpreter, and we're at this big river. And they said, we have to wait till morning to get across the river, because we have to be able to see, you know, in the banks, and it would lighten up enough so they could see uh, where to go down to. But they said, if you guys just take what you need for tonight, you just walk across the river, and um, there's shacks over there, and there's stoves in there, there's beds, there's shacks, that it's, it's for people traveling. And uh, you can go in there, you can start a fire, you can get warm, and you can rest. And so that sounded fine. Uh, it was quite a ways. And so, so we start, well, the snow is up to here. And my wife is like about this tall, so <laughs> not really, but she's, she's not tall. And so, you know, the rest of the team's going on ahead and we're behind. And part, over halfway across the river, Gwen sits down in the snow. And I said, what are you doing? She said, I can't do this. <laughs> well, we're pretty committed here. <laughs> I said, what do you mean you can't do this? She said, just leave me here. <laughs> she said, just leave me here. She said, you go. I'll. I just started laughing as loud as I could. I, I, said, I said, I am not leaving you here. <laughs> Like, oh, where's Gwen? Well, <laughs> I don't know, last time I saw her, she was. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I mean, I couldn't stop laughing. It was just the most ridiculous thing. I said, I'm not leaving you here. And I'm not staying here. We're going. We've got to. I said, she said, but I can't do this. I said, well. <laughs> And we got no choice here now. <laughs> we, we want to take a risk. We did, and here we are. And um, so I'll break the suspense. She, she got up, and I helped her, and we walked slowly through this deep snow. We get there. Oh, it was awful. I mean, the, the, it was so dirty. The beds were so filthy. Our granddaughter, Rachel, was with us, and she told us later as we got home, she was sure she was going to die that night. She said, I laid there, you know, we had our sleeping bags and we had all our clothes on and she was so cold. It took them forever to start a fire and it never did warm up really. And, and she said, I just laid there, thought, well, this is how it's going to end. Now, I didn't think that'd be different than this. But so I'm sure, I'm sure partway along Wayne sits down and the other three, what do you do? I'm not, I can't do this. Wayne, we're not leaving you here. If we go over there and they kill us, you're going to get killed with us. I mean, we're, we're all in this together. And there's such strength when you're together. So, you know, they encourage. But the amazing thing was, I mean, the Syrian camp, these are really nasty people. They'd kill anybody. They were. But they heard a sound. They heard a sound. And the sound they heard was of... Not an army, but several major armies together. Chariots, horses. This is absolutely phenomenal. You see, you might think you can't do anything. You might not think you've got anything to give. But if you'll just get up and you'll just start stepping forward... Miracles happen when you step out. Some people wait and wait for the waters to part. Waters part when you step into them. I mean, if these four guys had sat there outside the gate, they would have died. But God took these feeble, sick, dying lepers and did a miracle because he had something to work with. You know, God can do anything, but he's limited because he decided he's going to use people and he'll use anybody. And some of you are sitting there saying, well, I can't do anything. I mean, if there's ever four guys that could say, I can't do anything, it could have been these four. All they had to do was get up and start moving. That was their part. They could do that. It may not have been easy, but they could do it. And when they did what they could do, 
got, can you imagine? There's no way four lepers shuffling through the sand would sound like anything, like an army. But God took it and magnified it and amplified it. So the Syrians said, oh no, they've got all these armies together of all these different countries, we gotta go. They just took off. They left everything. They didn't take anything. They just ran. They left their animals. They left their food. They left their clothes. They left everything. And so, so these guys, they finally get to the camp, and they're just waiting you know, to die, be put out of their misery, because they still felt, felt weak and useless, but they'd done something. They didn't hear what the Syrians heard. They didn't hear that. We don't see in the spiritual. We're in the natural. And so everything in you might say, well, this is nothing. This is stupid. And some of you, you've started doing something and the devil said, this is stupid. This is useless. You might as well say, because it's God's doing something. The only one wants you to stop is the devil. (laughs) So they get to this camp and there's nobody home. They're waiting to die. They're expecting to have a bow through them or something. And these soldiers come out and cut their heads off. Nothing. There's nobody there. So they finally go into a tent. And there's food in there. Can you imagine? The four of them just started stuffing their faces. And then there was clothes and there was nice stuff. And they started grabbing it. And they ran out and they hid it. All of a sudden, they're not feeling sick. Now, all of a sudden, they're not feeling weak. All of a sudden, they're not thinking about dying. They're, sell- they're having a party. I'm here to tell you that the party's about to begin for some of you. You just got to get up. And you got to start moving So. So they hid it, and then they go to the next tent. Oh, there's more food. They left all the food they were cooking. They left everything. So they, and they did the same thing. And then one of them said, you know, this isn't a good thing. It's not just about us. It's about our city. It's about our nation. But this is where we fit in for Canada. God needs you. You might feel like you're a poor, weak, dying leper. But with all due respect, get over it. (laughs) But it's time, folks, to take some risk. You know, I've, I've talked to people even the last couple of weeks that say, well, you know, I believe God's calling me to do something. I'm just waiting for this. I'm waiting for that. Or, you know, my friend said, this isn't really a good time. What are you waiting for? They said, like, let's think about this. They said, if we stay here, we're going to die. And if we, all of us believers, if we do nothing... Canada will not fulfill its destiny. And this nation will die. And it's our families, it's our children, it's our grandchildren. But I believe if the people of God, no matter what they're going through, because some people say, I just got to get through this. These guys couldn't get through their leprosy. But we say, well, I just got to get through this. I've got to get stronger. I got to get better. Listen, as you go, you'll get stronger. As you go, you'll get healed. As you go, you'll find the blessing of God. But as you go, God will use you. He'll multiply what you're doing. He'll amplify it. He, we've got a God who does miracles, but he's looking for somebody who will rise up. We sing, oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. And then we sit and say, well, we can't do anything. Yes, you can. Maybe you can't do what Dick and Joan are doing. You can't do what Stephen's doing. But you can do what you can do. And everybody can do something. Help change the spiritual climate of Canada by becoming a monthly partner with Lifeline Today with Dick and Joan. All donors will receive this Lifeline Today fridge magnet, a reminder that you stand with Dick and Joan for Canada. Pledge your support for $25 a month and receive the booklet, Your Lifeline Today, Scriptures for Your Every Need. In it, you'll find prayer strategies, scriptures, and testimonies to build your faith for healing, family salvation, finances, and more. 
partner at $50 a month and receive as a thank you this elegant display showcasing a replica of the widow's might as spoken of by Jesus in Mark 12. This powerful reminder of sacrificial giving will inspire you daily. Lifeline today would also like to send you this finely crafted communion set when you partner at $100 a month. This silver plated serving tray with goblets is decorated with a panorama etching of the holy city of Jerusalem and is a beautiful display for any home. Your tax deductible donation will empower this ministry to release the prophetic word of God across our nation. Call today and say yes to becoming a partner with Dick and Joan. Everything was so hopeless in the city of Samaria, wasn't it? God's people were surrounded by their enemies. There was no food, no necessities of life. Perhaps you find yourself in hopeless circumstances today. Well, I want to read to you from Hosea chapter 2, verse 15, where it says, I will return vineyards to her and transform the valley of trouble into a gateway of hope. No matter what you're facing today, God is your hope. Just as he miraculously saved his people in Samaria, he will save you. We love to pray for you today, whatever your need might be. Telephone prayer partners are standing by. You can call at 403-942-0123. You can always email as well, prayercenter at dickandjoan.com. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Jill. You can say, call those phone lines anytime during the program and certainly even after for a little bit. Uh, but, you know, if you don't get in, just leave a message. They'll get back to you. We hear from so many. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, Bill is great at just bringing one of these stories to life with including some of those personal experiences with, uh, was it Wilma and uh, Wayne and Wilma? <laughs> He always uses a little spoon of sugar yeah. to make the medicine go down, but then he hits the point and brings it well, home. There's a great point. He's yeah. saying that if God can use four lepers, now lepers were probably the most ineffectual yeah. person alive on the planet at that time. They were unclean. They could not be near anyone. They weren't even in the city starving to death. They were outside the gate. Yeah. And it, it's an illustration that says something to us that it doesn't matter who you are. Never say to yourself, well, I can't be used by God. Yeah. The lepers are the example that God can use anybody. And they didn't even know how, but mm -hmm. he amplified their footsteps. <laughs> I mean, they just had... Oh, you know, don't you just love the supernatural? It's amazing. And God always operates in the supernatural yeah. when he wants to deliver his people. Yeah. You know, Dick, there is not a, a famine of food in this nation of Canada right now, but definitely there's a spiritual famine in yeah. the nation of Canada. And so that's how this story applies to us. There's a spiritual famine and God is saying that it's time for his people to rise up and take a risk. You know, our last election only shows that Canada has become amoral, mm -hmm. that we had the most scandalous, most convicted prime minister in history, and yet was voted in, a minority, but voted mm -hmm. in. That, that election was a failure on his part, but nevertheless, it still happened, but it shows you something. Yeah. The problem isn't politics. The problem is the people. It's, yeah. And you know, Joan, in Samaria, you know what initiated that transformation? Yeah. A prophetic word. A prophetic word. And here's what I want you to know. <laughs> We have felt our calling for three decades plus mm -hmm. that our calling was to be a prophetic voice to change the spiritual climate of yeah. Canada. That's right. Because when a prophetic word goes forth about our nation, that has the power to transform. And that's why those yeah. lepers were empowered. Yeah. Because when you release the prophetic voice, it empowers, God empowers people that seem like they have no ability. Yeah. And no influence, but he will empower it. And that's so important. That's why we are asking you to partner with us to sew into our equipment. Mm -hmm. This is really strategic timing. Yes, it is. And so we really do thank you and for you, that. You know, Dick, I think it's interesting that before this whole scenario could take place, Elisha had to prophesy. He did. And he prophesied a quick redemption to the nation. And, uh, you know, and so right now, I, uh, I believe that what is happening in Canada is the prophetic voices are rising once again, and they're prophesying a quick 
turnaround for the nation of Canada, for the spiritual climate of the nation of Canada. And I really believe that it's going to take place because the word is going across the nation. Someone said at our recent conference that it's the prophetic roar of the ecclesia is coming back. To Canada. I believe that's happening. But then the thing that happened afterwards was the lepers had to stand up and take a risk and start walking. Well, and the, I really believe that's where our partners come in The other application is the, to you and me and to you that are watching, never diminish what you can do for the that's kingdom. Right. I've heard people say, well, I, I don't have much, so my little doesn't make much difference, so I don't do anything. <laughs> but a actual fact, God mm -hmm. uses the least and the greatest. Mm -hmm. You know, Joan and I have told stories about how a man gave us a million dollars one time, which transformed what we were doing in television at that time. Mm -hmm. But by the same token, there were people that gave five dollars and then and and Absolutely. or partnered or prayed yeah. with us, and and so we never want to diminish how God can use what you have. Mm -hmm. I want to say thank you again because. There's an urgency in Joan and I right now to enlarge and expand and improve our television ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're working on it. We're part way there. We've actually made great steps in that direction, but we still have a little ways to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, you will see it in the quality of our production, but you'll also see it uh, that we will be able to enlarge our footprint. Yeah. And that means uh, being on in more networks or also using a, a, an app, a phone app that we're really yeah. now just developing so that can go all over the world. You mm -hmm. know, everybody has a smartphone in the world <laughs> and they can download an app and boom, they can get all the resources. It's really actually uh, radical right now. And we're on the cusp of the harvest of the earth That's right. as never before. Think about this at beginning, well, 1918, the population was 1.5 billion in, Canada, in uh, the world. And uh, today we're uh, about 7.7 .7 billion we're coming up to eight i think eight's a prophetic number it's a day mm -hmm. of new things uh, it is. i'm not making any predictions here but i'm just Excuse me. commenting that eight billion is a significant number and so prophets have mentioned the billion dollar half, uh, harvest well that's been going on for years that they've been saying that so i want to say we are posturing ourselves for the harvest God bless you as you do. Thank you for being a part of this program. Thank you for sowing into this program. I trust that this was an encouragement to you and that your spirit of faith has been elevated in this program. Amen. Amen. We look forward to seeing you again next time here on Lifeline Today. And remember this, Canada will be saved. Amen. This program is supported by viewers like you, and we thank you for partnering with us. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments about the program. To watch past episodes, learn about the ministry, or contact us, visit our website at dickandjoan.com. You can also find us on Facebook at Lifeline Today with Dick and Joan and on our YouTube channel, Dick and Joan TV.